Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? I hope uh, today this message finds you in a good place for yesterday. It was the blue moon, the biggest moon that there was. And apparently we hadn't had such a powerful energetic moon in uh, over three decades. And or we're not going to have it for the next three decades. Uh, and I was thinking, I went outside looking up into the moon. Actually, I even took a picture of it. And the ray, the energy that was oozing out of it, I felt like howling to the moon, but I didn't. So what gives you energy? What is it that you surround yourself? What do you look up to? That's going to be today's talk because there are so many things in life that we take for granted. And I don't know where you are in life and how you are, how you make yourself present, how you center yourself, how you protect yourself, shield yourself, or open yourself and give yourself the opportunity to be one with everything that there is. You know, there was a saying um, my grandmother used to say, um, stop sharing everything because when you share it, other people take and zap that energy and they can use it. Well, as I have grown and uh, through the years of working, the work that I do, you know, a lot of people can take some of your information, some can... Uh, take a part of it and modify it but when you look at it I want you to see that thoughts are just thoughts and words words that are spoken anything even in the self-development in the self-help industry and that I am in there is nothing new everyone says it in their own way so you may have not heard of the same things that I am talking about, or someone can say, Lisa, there is nothing new that you say. But another person may turn around and say, you know, I may have heard it, but the way you said it made an impact. So it can be tonality, it can be the way we resonate with someone, it can be a book that we read. You know, in my book, um, heal that mind body uh, yes it is on Amazon or you can even go to my website in the products in the shop and my books are there I have three self-help books one on uh, release emotional weight it's called stand up to slim down how we release emotional weight the other one is stomp on smoking it's like stomp on smoking instead of quit smoking because you know this we as adults have been trained not to be quitters right so we know what stop is so we stop smoking and I put it as actually I have the picture stomp on smoking because you know when we stomp on it it's like we did it we decide no more and the third one is this one, Heal Thy Mind Body, Imagination with Intention, a Guide to a Healthier You. So I was going through my book and it says, Unload, over, uh, unload Stress Overload. Listen to this, Unload Stress Overload. So what is stress? How do you stress? What causes stress in your life? I would love to know. Um, if you are here, share it. What creates stress? Because stress is everywhere. Um, there is good stress, there is bad stress. Think of one person who wants to get married. 
for the girl it could be absolutely no stress because she is in joy overload and another person can go through the same thing and they would be stress overload so marriage is one of them uh, believe it or not uh, taking a test for some it's a breeze and for others test taking is one of the most stressful things that there is um, I can name a few that I myself go through um, creating a new project for me creation is absolutely no stress I love to create I love my imagination words are absolutely one of the things that I love to do is I write and I write and I create actually I'm creating another uh, a therapy journal and if you're interested by all means let me know we have a 33 day journal that I have created it's called evoke embrace evolve the 33 day journal that that too is on my website and on Amazon and it's every single day thinking of one thing I have the questions and then it's pondering upon that and it's questions that are self-reflection for you to think about it and reflect on the questions and you write it because I believe when you write the subconscious goes into a flow state and you start writing without thinking analyzing and judging and it can be the same that when you type but when, when you type the thing the difference between typing is that you can back backspace or cut and paste and delete things but when you write and, and go into flow writing it's impossible for you to erase ink you may put a line through it and yet you can still see what your thoughts were and when there is no judgment and analyzing all your thoughts and feelings come into play and it doesn't matter if it is negative or positive because it's the same thing goes into workspace home space so as a clinical hypnotherapist and stress management consultant I used to do a lot of workshops and presentations in the corporate world um, if you go to my uh, website the heal within and look at the corporate wellness the presentations that I have done in the corporate world is not the norm most people do but it is tapping within the emotions of a corporate industry let me give you an example coming from the corporate world myself and working in the uh, corporate field in the legal departments so it was all cubicles right as paralegals and legal secretaries each person had their own desk we used to sit in our cubicles um, after COVID a lot changed a lot of people are doing work from home and online but then we used to go in there. so just imagine everyone has to go up into the elevator together now if someone has a claustrophobic uh, uh, reaction and they get into that stress and anxiety because there's too many people in the elevator and I remember uh, witnessing one person that literally he would wait until everybody was gone he would wait more than five minutes and ten minutes to make sure that the elevator did not have more than two people in there then he would step into the elevator he would go all the way to the end of the elevator so he can hold on to both walls and just stand there to go to the eighth floor that's where we were you know then I wasn't doing hypnotherapy that's like over 25 years ago but I remember standing in the elevator with this one uh, one of my colleagues we were in downtown LA and as I was standing next to him actually not next to him but in the elevator 
I said, have you thought of just doing breathing exercises? He says, no, at this moment, I can't think of anything. You see, when we are in a stress mode, what do we naturally do? We hold our breath. Holding our breath also gives us a sense of tension. So it sends the message of I am tense and it's like a contraction and it's very intense for the body as well. And that energy is not flow, it's constricted. So when in a state of stress mode, the first thing you need to think of is oxygen. So when you are in stress mode, what you need is oxygen. And I'm not even talking about flow mode. For you to unload the stress or the anxiety, you need to breathe to give your body oxygen. And when you take that oxygen inwards, hold it and count one, two, three, four, and just like in the old days, just blowing into the brown bag, just imagine blowing into as if you are blowing um, a balloon. And as you blow into the balloon, you see the balloon getting big, right? And that releases tension out of your body. And then you take it out, you go, you blow into that balloon again. Now the balloon is becoming bigger and you're getting more oxygen. And as you exhale, you release the tension, you release stressors. You unload it from your body outwards onto a balloon, into a brown bag, or just out into the openness. So the tension releases from the body. I don't know if you recall or not, but for 15 years, I did massage therapy. So the thing about massage is also the same thing. When you are on that table and you want to go into that state of relaxation, there's music, hopefully the place is more dim with the lights because so that the lights are not disrupting you. And the body goes into that state of, I am ready to relax. The massage therapist that starts with you, it's always touching, hopefully they start either from the bottom of your feet or from your head. Just the tension of them ask, just uh, ex expressing, you can just let go, close your eyes. The moment you close your eyes, you are giving the suggestion to your body, I am ready to relax. So the body goes into this mode of okay, I am at a place that I can just let go and relax. The first touch onto your body is so significant. As you know, there is good touch, there is bad touch. There is a touch that even coming close to you, your body may crunch and you know where that's coming from. Or there is the good touch that you can't wait until you just melt into either that person's arms, into their chest. It can be dancing or just standing next to them. You feel safe just by being. And that person in the elevator also felt safe when I was in the elevator. So making sure that when he wanted to go to lunch, he would signal me from across the room and we would take the lunch break together. And it's the same thing on as if being on that massage table. You make connection, hopefully, you go to the same person who's doing the massage or you trust the massage therapist to hold space for you and they know how to treat your body in a more loving space and they know how to treat the massage that they are giving you. 
Here's what happens. The first touch as you are doing the massage, starting from the head, as they start massaging the head, the scalp, every nerve, every muscle, every organ, every tissue in your body starts going to that level of relaxation from a good touch. So stress, as you release it, the tension comes out of your body. With every sigh, with every breath you take and release, your body releases tension. And that's the good massage. Because as they are doing deep tissue, remember, with each breath you take, as they go in, as you exhale, they do the deeper massage. Because when if you feel tension and that they are doing tense work and they are going deeper, if you hold your body, you, you, you tense up, then if they do that pressure right there, it will bruise you. Why? Because stress and tension do not go together. Here is a part of my unloading of stress overload. It says, head junks include all the negative and constant draining thoughts, emotions, and beliefs you carry around your head on a regular basis. So all the past doubts, harsh criticism, and could have, should have, all those internal doubts that you may have within yourself should have done, done this, could have said better, judgments, criticism, and it's not always from someone else, but our own. And maybe you heard it from someone, but you repeat it in your head. That's all head junk. So, because you keep it in your head and it's not real. They are just thoughts that can come and go. You can send it, blow it into that balloon. You can blow it in a brown bag. You can just imagine bringing the window down in your car and just going, just blow it out the window and then put the window back up. You see, there are so many ways that you can release overload of stress and head junk and release them and let them go so it's not part of your body. Release it from your body that it's not inside your body. Stop holding on to stressors. Release it by doing this. Actually, we can do this together right here, right now. Just imagine if you have stress, all kinds of stress, worried about somebody, worried about their health, worried about your work, worried about your health or somebody else's health, uh, worried about money. There is stress, all kinds of stress, your stress. I don't know what your stress is right here, right now. Right here, right now, whatever it is from your head, just imagine taking it from your head like this, whatever stress it is, and just clipping it, putting it in the palm of your hand, putting it in your palm. Okay. Now that you have it, now I want you just imagine instead of head tension, squeeze, squeeze it, squeeze it harder, squeeze it tighter, squeeze it, and then one, two, three, and release. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Just release it, let it go. That's it. You, I am positive, I am 100% certain that you feel a tingling in the palm of your hands. Now let's do this again because I'm sure there is a little bit more stress and someone said something that it's still in your head. 
It's a junk load, right? It is junk. It's not yours. It was not created by you. You heard it. You took it. You hold on to it. And it could be something from the past. It is not the reality right now, right here. Even the trauma that you experienced in the past, it is now not here. It is a memory. It is a thought. It is something that you are emotionally connected to it. So let us put it in our head. Think of it. Think of it. Think of it. Now, let's grab it. Whatever it is that you're thinking, put it in here. Great. Now, bring it in. Hold on to it. It's in the past. We evoked it. We thought about it. Now, let's hold on to it right here in the palm of your hands, both of them. Make a fist tighter. Squeeze it. Squeeze it just like squeezing a lime in the palm of your hand. Let the, all the juices come out. If I had a line right here, right now, I would have done it. Squeeze it as if you have a stress ball in the palm of your hand. Squeeze that line. Squeeze that stress ball. Squeeze it. One, two, three. Harder, harder, harder. And now, ready? One, two, three. And let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Drop it down and you can do this, you can do this, and you can even do this as if being in a Mexican restaurant, you know how they do the tequila sh shuffle, right? And <sighs> drop it, release it. I bet you anything now the tickling session at the palm of your hands is doubled. Guess what? You feel more now. You feel it in the palm of your hands. It's less here more here now release just imagine as if you go and you place your hands under the faucet cold water coming and wash your hands under that cold water oh just imagine it yes even your fingers will feel that coolness the cold water just wash it i'm getting goosebumps just by thinking about it yes and when you close the water dry it has the tension did you just drop some of that stress did you just unload some of that stress from your body from your head junk and release it down, letting it go. Recognizing that it all started with one thought. Stress in the body, stress in the head. You are in total control of every thought. You are in control of your emotions. You are in control of your body. Remember one thing, if you create it, you can also let it go. If you heard it, you can junk it. If you felt it, you can release it. Just yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine and she said, I have this incredible pain right here as if someone has stabbed me in the back. Oof. I said, stand up. She said, what do you mean? I said, stand up for a moment. And as she stood up and I said, may I just touch your back? She says, yes. And I said, before I touch, I want you to think about how you felt that stabbing, who it was, what they said, what they did, and how you took it. And she's like, okay. And I said, only, only you would do something. And I said, she said, like, only you would come up with something like that. And I said, doesn't matter. Think about the person who did it. Think about the person who said it. Think about the person, the way they did it. And she says, okay, I got it. I got it. And I said, how does it feel? She's like, oh, as if it's burning sensation. And I said, okay, on the count of one, two, three. And I am pulling it up. She's like, okay. And I said, and I tapped on her back. One, two, three, release it.
drop it, drop it. And I shook her for just a moment like this. And there's people watching it. And I didn't care because it's not about anybody else. At that very moment, it was about her. It was releasing the tension. As I shook, and we just, she's like, she, she sat down and she says, wow. It feels better. And here's the thing. If that feeling was on the scale of one to 10 in eight, she most probably felt a four. Now, it doesn't mean that I completely let it go because it only took two minutes. As a matter of fact, I want you to know this. It is the thought, it's the idea of what you can create. You can also let go and destroy and release and delete and just modify. It's a shift in the thought process, shift in the body, shift in the energy within yourself. That's called, I am in control. Because a lot of people can do and say a lot of things. A lot of people can copy. A lot of people can they can intend to hurt you. But it is up to you if you take it, you hold on to it, you accept it, or negate it. And it's the same thing as many people can copy your words, copy your business, copy your thoughts, copy your ideas. Someone said the same thing about me because I mentioned it. Now here's the thing. How many hairdressers are in within one block within your community? Everyone does hair. Everyone cuts hair everyone colors but no one does it just like you if you are a teacher if you are a a consultant if you are a coach if you are a businesswoman a businessman an electrician uh, anything any thing that you are a professional in a designer, a painter, it doesn't matter. No one says it like you, does it like you, speaks like you, nor has the same delivery and the energy and intention like you. We're all unique. And how we connect with someone is what matters. How you speak and how you connect with the person is what matters. So what you hold on to and what you choose to let go is also yours. In here it says, if you permit self-defeating negative thoughts and feelings to build up consciously or unconsciously, your mental distress storage will fill to the brim. So when it comes to the rim, what happens? It overflows. And here's when you turn around and say, I let it all flow out just like washing your hands, let it flow, let it go. Only you can allow it to go and release. So if there is anything in your life right here, right now, that either knowingly or unknowingly you have been holding on to, that you took it upon yourself to place it upon your shoulders, Perhaps it's been weighing you down, either knowingly or unknowingly. Shake it off. Brush it off. Let it overflow. Let it go down the drain. 
He can even say, I take it from above, allow the light to surround me, protect me, shield me from the top of my head all the way down to my toes. That from this day forward, I am shielded and protected with light, in light of my own light. That as long as I have this shield upon me, nothing and no one can penetrate. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. The word I am is of God. And the word safe is knowing that you are safe physically, mentally, and emotionally and spiritually by you for you and when you are safe stress has nothing over you may you be in flow may you be in light if you want more techniques I gave you some metaphors today, the elevator, the releasing on a massage table, washing the hands, blowing into a balloon, into a brown bag, or bringing the window down and releasing it away. Recognize that every, every time that I speak, I bring to you techniques tools, metaphors, some that you can use, others that is probably a metaphor someone else. So I ask you if you could share, like, even subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you do a beautiful testimonial, a short testimonial on Google, I would truly appreciate it because I come here for you. And thank you for those of you who message me privately, email me, I thank you. I know sometimes it feels like not many hear of me or recognize that there are so many of you who thank me and I truly appreciate because this is why I'm here for you. If I make an impact in one person's life, and I've done my job. And that's what Heal Within is all about. Making the impact so one person can heal within. And if that translates and becomes a boomerang and travels with words or indeed, then so much better. I'd like to close today's session with a 30 second mindful silence for the healing of cold weed and for anyone who is in pain and suffering that needs a prayer. Thank you. As we do, I thank you for this moment, this time, and welcome to Heal Talk at always, as always. Next week, I have a special guest. Please tune in, and I thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Real Talk each and every week. Until next week, God bless you and may the universal light surround you always. Bye-bye. And if you like this, share it, 
subscribe and go to YouTube and you'll see the rest of all my podcasts.